Hi, my beautiful brothers and sisters. This is Mary Hernandez with part two, Preacher. Um, and as I was doing the Bible um, study yesterday, um, and also reading on with the Bible, um, you know, that preacher had spoke to me, the Holy Spirit. So I started saving, you know, a little bit of scriptures that, you know, kind of almost like puzzle it together to make some sense out of it. Um, and as I preached to you that it was telling you how Jesus was circumcised, you know, um, and how he was made pretty much the master and grabbed them as teaching them what they have to go out there and preach to the people, right? Which was the mastery of the Bible. And I just shared Bible verses with you and pointing out some of the creatures, um, men that had made themselves um, gods in this world, you know? Um, and um, so on and so forth. Thank you, Mother. <laughs> so, I did, um, hold on. Yeah, I did picture. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm trying to do right now, and I'm going to base it off of the Bible verse, that who was the first creature that was born because a creature talks about the darkness and then you talk about that. So I was thinking um, Adam and that's what I am saying on here. Um, so um, I'm actually going to base it off. I think it was Hollis. Yeah. Um, Sorry about that. It's just me wanting to know um, if I share it with you um, in this one or um, if I have to do a third one, then I will, even if it's a short one. Um, but now it brings me to Luke 10, right? Luke 10, Bible verse 17 and 18. And this is when he had the people going out there, remember, um, when he was casting out demons um, and they were working for Jesus. So Jesus is in the ungodly world. And I know by now I, I showed you that, right? So we're in the world, but not in the world. The only difference is once you get healed, right, you're walking in light, in the newness, in the image of the creator. But when you're still sinning, you're representing the creature. That's the difference. That means you're still sinning. You're still in debt to the darkness. When you're no longer, you're walking as the children of the light, not children of the darkness. Do you understand the difference? So when Jesus is serving them, right, they were doing sorceries, witchcraft, and that's in Acts 19 when you read Paul, Barnabas, um, the people that were chosen by Jesus, that they were going out there preaching a little bit of Greek, a little bit of Jews. Um, and this is what it says, right? Luke 10, 17. And the 70 return again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Well, what do you think? Yeah, because you're serving them. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> Why wouldn't they be uh, about your back and call? Because you're functioning for them. You're working in the beast system. When you are hated, if it's easy, it's not from God. When you are hated, it's because you're doing what is right. All of a sudden, I mean, you're a misfit. All she thinks she's too good. Oh, wow, she's holy now, you know, and then they start and start because it's almost, almost to me is like, man, you know, I can't believe I was filthy rags. You know, I can't believe I was actually working for the darkness and I was, and that was a big part that I was living under condemnation at the beginning when she was lifting me up. I, I, I was fighting it because I was like in despair, like. Wow. 
like, wow, I had no idea. And it was guilt, you know, and like, gosh, I can't believe I was doing that. I can't believe I was serving the darkness. Like it was hard for me. It took some time and it took a lot of the pastors on TV to be hearing, hey, under God, you don't live under condemnation. But it was hard for me to accept that I went and I sinned like that against a creator. Because then you get to know that you were around people that were evil and wanted nothing so much. You were sleeping with the enemy, the devils, demonic people, people that don't like us because we're children of God. But as long as we're serving them, like they lift you up. And when you don't, you get cast out. Then you're called misfit. Then you're called different. But that's good to be called different because you're no longer serving them. You know what I'm saying? And that was hard for me to deal with. And it took some time to and always that all right, I'm forgiven, I'm not living that way, you know, and I left that life. And however, she threw me back in there, but it was to bring her children back to her, to bring this world back to her, saying, hey, she did it for me, she could do it for you, you know, but the devil's going to fight for your soul. So he's going to throw temptation at you. They're losing a lot of people, and I am so glad because you're coming back in a covenant with the Creator, and you're not staying in, in debt, in debt to the to the creature. And the Bible tells you that. So then it says, Luke 10, 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as a light fall from heaven. You see that? That's how they see it. I saw, because remember, I said, oh, it's a star. A star that was born. A star that came from heaven. A star that was born light, from light. And it was Satan. He got cast down, thrown down from heaven. He didn't come down saying, oh, hey. No, he got thrown out of heaven. That's what he was done. Now, um, now it brings me. Real quick. Mm -hmm. Now, sorry, it was trying to see, but I want to do a little bit of study on it before I preach it to you. Now it brings me to Oh yeah, <laughs> sorry because I went back and I did Heli, H-E-L-I that is in Luke um, 13, I mean Luke 3, uh, Bible verse 23, that it says the grandfather of um, Joseph was uh, a Hellenist. So I did what is Heli. Um, Heli meaning is origin, saying that she knows. The meaning of Heli ascended and climbing up. It says in Heli, in the New American Standard Bible, an individual man joining the gospel, Luke, as the grandfather of Jesus, which is a Heli. You know, now anyways, it brings me to um, Collis 3.23. And this is like really a lot of, you know, Bible verses that, that speak as we're going back and forth in the creature 23 and 24. And it says, Call us 3, 23, and 24. But whatsoever you do, do it heartily, not as the Lord, and not unto men. You know, repeatedly the Bible says, you know, they're, they're preaching false doctrine of men, of men, of men. If it was father and son, why wouldn't it be of men? You understand? They say that because they want you to believe that Jesus is the son of the most high God of the creature he is. And that's the truth. And that is proven in, call, in, in Luke 3, Bible verse 23 down. It tells you exactly where he comes from. That is no lie. It's in the Bible. Um, but not of the creator. You know? And you got to remember, at the end of the day, she made everything clean. People decided to go follow after darkness. And it says, um, call us three. 24, knowing that the Lord, you shall receive a reward of inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. 
but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he had done, and there is no respect to that person. Because it's like, you know, you're preaching false doctrine. You know that that keeps people in bondage, you know, um, in believing the lies that they're saying, you know, and it keeps a lot of people still worshiping evil and darkness, and it is wrong. So... This is for we are working for the Lord and not for men, you know. Um, so now it brings me to Luke 16, 1. And this is like kind of something that I wanted to, that I did a little bit of Bible study. Is that one right? Um, 16. Sorry about that. I thought I had it in Um, Luke 16, 1. It brings me to this beautiful story, right? And I wanted um, to know more about it, you know? So I did it, and this is what it says in Luke 16, 1. And he said, also unto the disciples, there was a certain rich man which had a steward. And on the same is this accused unto him that wasted his goods, Right? He called him and he said unto him, How is it that I hear of this? You give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest no longer steward. The steward said on within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord has taken away from me the stewardship that I cannot dig to beg that I am ashamed. I am resolved to do that I am to put out of my stewardship that they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his lords debtors. Remember, you're in debt when you're sinning, you know. So he said he called unto every one of the lords debtor, and unto him he said, First, how much you owe us unto my lord? And he said, I'm a hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then the other one, it says, How much owe us though? And he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and write fourscore. The Lord commanded the unjust steward, because he had done wisely with the children of the world in their generation, wiser than the children of the light. Do you get what he was saying? You know, that um, if, if you read it, it says, Then he said to another, How much more owest thou? And he said, A hundred measures. He said, A weed. And he said unto him, because he was storing this money, right? And he was storing this money, and he said, man, my stewardship got taken away. You know, now I'm in debtor. I owe, he's saying, right? And then he says, well, write this measures down, and then write down a uh, 100. And then he said, write down thy bill, and write down four score. The Lord commanded the unjust, because he's unjust. He's a debtor, right? Steward, the unjust steward. Because he had done wisely, what you did was very smart. And he, what he had done is wisely. For the children of the world are in their generation wiser than the children of the light. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because he was becoming a debtor to the, to the unjust, to the doctors. And then the children of the light that we have an inheritance. Hello, here they are getting stewardship money, but using it. For the people, you know, of the disobedient, the children of the darkness. And then you get the people that are getting stewardship. That's what he said. What did you do with it? You know, what were you doing with it? You got blessed out there. What were you doing with it? Were you using it for my kingdom? That's what the people that are sitting there preaching God, God, you know, so to my ministry. What are you doing with that? What are you when the, Are you taking it back to the darkness? Are you sitting there giving it to the darkness? Or are you helping the people? When you see somebody that is poor, that's stewardship. What are you doing with that money? Is it prospering the darkness? Or is it prospering the light? Is it bringing people back to God? Or is it that you're doing it for the unjust? And he says it on here. And the Lord commanded Luke 16, 8. 
He said, the Lord commanded the unjust steward because he had done wisely for the children of the world that are their generation wiser because they're smarter than the children of the light. <laughs> and, and it's true. <laughs> and it's true. And you think you're doing big things out there. He said, what are you doing for my kingdom? What are you doing? Are you using that to bring people back to me? You know, for you of you that are asking for sowing seed in your Bible, are you biting Bibles? Are you praying over people that are out there that are lost? Are you praying that he bless you? Oh, even if you're getting blessed from an ungodly pe person, the unjust, and he's him bringing it back, using it for the people of the darkness? You know, are you sitting there? What are you doing with it? You know, and he said, man, this person is, is a lot wiser. It says the children of this world and their generation is wiser than the children of the light. <laughs> that should be an embarrassment to you because you should be that example. You're in the world, but not of the world. But you're not because you're living just like they are. And then you're wondering, saying, God, where where is my inheritance? Where is it? Well, hey, you're still functioning. And then there's people are doing something right with that money. That is your inheritance. So who's really losing? What did it, it talked and John Ramirez said something that was so true. What was the difference with that prodigal son that went lost and splurged all that money? And what happened when he ran out of the money? He went and spent it on hookers, did whatever he did out there, right? And then it says, what, what happened after that? You know, he ran out of money. Nobody talked to him. Nobody wanted nothing to do with him. There was no good for him no more. So what did he do with that money? Stupid shit. You know, but then what happened? He came to his senses and he said, wow, you know what? When I was with my father, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> All I had to do was follow the Ten Commandments. And I wanted so desperate to see what this ungodly world was like. And I became a debtor. And I was with the, with the swines, the pigsties. And he was. I was being filthy rags. And he said, man, even the servants that, that worked for my father... The servants are, are living better than me. I'm eating out here nothing, crumbs. What are you doing? It's the creature serving. The creature is so good. It's so much better of a lifestyle. And you're waiting for a miracle to come. And he tells you what to do. And then what did he do? He came to his senses and his dad, what? He threw him a party. Don't get me wrong. I sit there and be like, hey. <laughs> Hello, here I am, you know, hello, Father. But I know everything's in due season. The thing is for now is to put in the word to bring you back to him and you're worth it. <laughs> and you really are, you know, and I can say that joyfully because I went through a lot, but I knew I hadn't been going through so much if I wasn't doing something so right. So it's like, you know, keep it coming because that's what keeps me on my toes. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I love challenges and she knows that. She knows that she gets me up, get up. Like somebody says I can't do it, oh, <laughs> you're so wrong. Because I've always had that mentality. Somebody says you can't do it, I can do all things through my mother, Yahweh. Like that. I, I'm, like don't push me because I go harder, you know. Like, And it's for good, not for bad, you know. Like I just, I'm an overcomer because of her and her in me. And I am a conqueror because of her and her in me and I am victorious because of her in me. I have every reason to be, to rejoice. Did I cry? Did I stumble? Not in sin, but you know, was I taken down and then brought back up? You know, but not forsaken because she kept lifting me up. Keep going. Keep going. I'm like, oh man. You know, a couple times I just said, hey, physically I'm tired, mother, and then boom, a boost of energy. I call it the holy fire. It was a fire, fire, flaming fire. I felt like fury, flaming fire. I would go out there. Amazing. And then it brings you back to Luke 16, 9. And they say unto you to make yourself friends of manum, of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, that they may receive you into everlasting habitation. So what is it saying? It's trying to lure you in. Like, hey, you know what? Well, this person is over here sinning. You know, and, and, you know, they're prospering, they're doing everything, you know, and then you get the God's children that are in there, they're sinning, but nothing is happening. Why is it not? Why is it not that you're not prospering because you're sinning? 
you're following the things of the world. It said fall in love with man and fall in love with the money and, and you will fall into this habitation. I will give it to you. That's how he lose you. So what do people do? Well, hey, maybe if I go sell myself, maybe if I go work over here real cheap at a restaurant. You know, some of these people weren't even getting paid at working at fast food restaurants because we were in slavery. And I think I heard even some stars that were anointed that they go up there praying the devil was making all this money and they weren't making nothing. It was all a persona on TV to make it look like they were making big money and they weren't doing nothing. And it tells you, all oh, Luke 16, read it all. Luke 16, 10, that he that is faithful, which is with the least, he is faithful also with much. He that is unjust is the least of the unjust also in much. You know what I'm saying? So even if you right now, even if it might seem to somebody that it's a little, it is much because it's bringing a lot of people back to the creator, what we got chosen to do. You might not see it, but the world sees it. You know what I'm saying? Heaven rejoices when you see one sinner that repents, opposed to 99 that said, God, I'm serving you. I'm doing right. But inside, there's still filthy rags. Those are the whitewashed tombs. But somebody that could honestly say, hey, I had filthy rags. I was covered in blood and a blood covet. But she washed me and she cleansed me. And I am not sinning. I am not sinning. Do I have to watch my mouth? Yes, so I have to rebuke. And I have to sit there and and um, ask for forgiveness every day. You know, because sometimes we say things as I move. Sometimes I even say, oh, that was carnal. I shouldn't have said that. But it's simple, stupid shit, nothing crazy. <laughs> you know, so you see, you have to watch. And it tells you on there, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> you know, if fall in love with manna, you fall in love with manna. You can't love manna and love the other. Either hate one or hate the other. But which one do you want to serve? Do you want to go have it the hard way and go to be everything that you created to be? Or are you going to have it easy, fall in love with Anna, and never walk into your inheritance? And the people of the world are actually feasting. It looks like they're having fun. But what does it say? Do not be jealous of them. Because that world is also coming to an end. And that's also in here, in Luke. Let me go ahead. Luke 16, right? 10. He that is faithful in that which is least, it is faithful also in much. He that is unjust is, is in the least of the unjust also in much. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous, madam, who will commit to you trust and the true riches. Well, of course it's going to give you that because then they get to have you and sit on your inheritance. Why not? Who's smarter? Who's smarter? The devil is. The devil's a liar. You know, he has to continue. We'll wait here and people are waiting for you, but you're still sinning. You're working for them. You're in debt to them. You owe them. Not God. God tells you it's freely given to you. All you have to do is come back in a water cover with me. Stop sinning and you will walk into your inheritance. And they cause division, bogery, everything, all that that keeps you in bondage with the world. Luke 16, 12. And if you have not been faithful in much, which is another's, which it says, if you have not been faithful in much, which is another man's, who shall give who should give you that which is your own? Mm. You know, I promise you when I had some um, pull um, at the beginning of this journey, you know, I can't get too much into detail about it, but when I'm able to say my testimony, you know, I was in power. You know, I am in power. <laughs> it's just now it's for, well, if, even when I was in the darkness, I became in power and I really did. And it said, well, what are you going to do for my kingdom? And this is exactly what she said. Seek the things of God first and everything else will be added to you. And she said, if I cannot trust you with worldly money, how can I trust you with heavenly money? And at first I was all like, what do I do? Well, hey, <laughs> I can't say it. <laughs> but I got into a really high calling in the ungodly world, you know, um, and because they knew who I was, and this is true, real talk. So what did I start doing? I started praying for them to build wells. That was my mother that did it through me. Um, feeding the poor all over the world, opening churches. Um, I mean, prayer, I went on. I was using the world money like nothing, and they were building it. Why? It was all over TV. 
it was all over TV. I used my influence, believe it or not, Joe's goes for, Joyce, uh, Mayor did one, Meyer, <laughs> and she did one, and she said, well, use your influence. What are you going to do with it? You know, and I was like, what do I do? Start praying, start saying it, and boom, they were building it. You see in Heidi, they had an earthquake, some people over there, you see people that were coming up with bags, they were taking fish, they were taking rice, bags of rice, you see people lining up. Us to start feeding the poor, start going around. You've seen a family that was on the side of the trash. I went into prayer. Why are they on the side of the trash? Get them in. Boom, boom, boom. I sat there and was looking out for my people, even in the time of darkness. And when she put me in there, what do you do? I bless him that blesses you. I bless you because she asked me to do it. So you don't think they didn't notice that? Yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah, they did. So I was a smart stewardship. <laughs> And I was sitting there praying for them to say, continue um, doing my tidings, the 10%, and they were paying it. <laughs> so I'm telling you, what was I doing? Seeking the things of the kingdom of my father first. I was using the worldly money for my father's kingdom to bring people back to him. And it did. It did an awakening all over the world. It was all my mother. And here you are. That's the saying, what are you doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on now. Now. It says Luke 16, 13, right? No servant can serve two masters, for either you hate one, or the or it says he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold on to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God. And madam, believe it or not, before she moved me out of um, Mount Sinai, you know, she said, well, you're going to have to leave that job. You know, I, I almost got like, should it? Can I say that? Because I was, <laughs> can I say that? I was on, I thought I was working for you. Like, what do you mean I'm about to leave the job? You know, it's like that easy peasy. Like, that wasn't no problem. She said, now we're going to the next location. Let's go. We're going town to town, town to town. Let's go. What are you going to do? She put me in churches everywhere. I was going into churches. Other 10% doing the awakening. Jesus preaching. Not once did I ever deny the maker. I preached and I prayed over people. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Let that sink in. And this is the first time that this has spoken to me. It's a creature, the, the man of the world, or the true living God. And in there, I stood faithful. They tried to throw sin at me. Anything you could think of. Drugs, money, uh, a big old thing of um, of jewelry. And I gave it all away. You know, um, I'm telling you, but I did not slide. You know, well, you know, your husband's out there cheating. I said, well, God is working on him. <laughs> I said, God is working on him and the way he worked on me. Some people heal faster. Did it hurt me? Absolutely, it did. You know, but I didn't concentrate on that because the devil likes to mess with you, with your feelings, your emotion. He uses even your family, you know, but I didn't concentrate on that. I just said, well, God is working on him the way he's working on me. I stood faithful to my husband. Those are marriage values that you stay really sacred to. I was no longer in darkness. I was no longer more, you know, more, uh, Bitter, angry about the betrayal. Did it hurt? Absolutely it hurt. You know, but I stood faithful to my calling, my daughters, my my children, you know, um, that she gave me to pray over. Then she added the world to me. If I would have sinned, if I would have slighted, it would have been hell on earth, brothers and sisters. Nobody has been able to make it and finish this course to break that generational curse. You know? Now it says Luke 16. 14, and the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things that they desired him. And he said unto them, that they, it says, ye that are very which justify yourself before man, but God knoweth your heart, in which is highly esteemed among men, is abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were until John, but since the thine kingdom of God is preached, and every man presses into it, it is easier for the heaven and the earth to pass than the little one of the law to fail. <laughs> Whosoever putteth away his wife for an, and marrieth another committeth adultery. Whosoever marrieth her is put away her husband committeth adultery. Do you understand why you have to stay loyal that they will be a certain rich man? I'm going to stop right there um, so I could go into the next story. But that's Luke 16, Bible verse 8. And then I will do part through video because the next story is also amazing. 
can you get it? Do you get it? I get it. <laughs> and it took a lot of studying to get that revelation. But again, I pray, I pray that this message receives you and you hear it and understand what it is that the Bible really 